I will stay and hear your remarks. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, and thank you, Dean. Uh, thank you to the Armenian National Committee of America and the Armeni Armenian Assembly for organizing this commemoration ahead of next week's Armenian Genocide Remembrance Day. Let us salute Chairman Frank Pallone, uh, co-chair with Jackie Spear and Eshu, all of our uh, so many members and a part of the Armenian Caucus on Armenian Issues, many other congressional allies of Armenia here. And of course, it's a privilege to be with so many of my colleagues from California. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, Katie, and so many others, some of whom I named, and which is proudly home to 40% of the American Armenian com population. Oh, there you are, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, as speaker, it was my privilege to travel to Yerevan with Chairman Pallone, Representative Anna Eshu, and Jackie Spear. There we visited the Genocide Memorial, which was truly a life-changing experience. We there reached before the eternal flame, spoke the names of communities destroyed, walked among the memorial trees, learned the horrific truths at the Museum Institute. Doing so reaffirms our firm belief that the Ottoman Empire's monstrous crimes against humanity must never be erased. As we make clear by tonight's theme, preventing a second Armenian genocide, we must ensure that these atrocities never happen again. In Congress, we are particularly proud of our work to secure the official United States recognition of the Armenian genocide use of history. And I thank all of you for your outside mobilization, your persistence in all of this, to make sure that we were finally successful in getting this done. And we did this with our resolution in 2019 when President Biden took office in 2021. He followed suit with a formal announcement from the administration. At every president and candidate that we knew, right, Frank? Right? You know, Adam, because you've been through this again and again, said they supported the designation of Armenian genocide until they became president. I remember President Bush saying to me, I know, I know, you're going to show me my letter. I said, you know, you know, I'm going to show you your letter. <laughs> in which you declared Armenian genocide, but again, when he became president, that was not the case. Now we in Congress remain focused on Azerbaijan's use of force in Nagorno-Karabakh, which threatens to drag the region in dark and deadly paths. And thank you, thank you. Mr. Schiff, for your persistence in calling for the end of the uh, um, support, the funds going there, and as Katie Poore mentioned too, and so many others, we want an answer as to what those funds are for and why they are going there. Money being fungible, you may think they're for one purpose, right, Frank? How many times have we had this conversation with the administration since the trip? I know. Um, Mr. Schiff was in his Armenian community when we were in Armenia, but he is on the phone with us every time when we have our briefings, and we're about to get a classified briefing on all this. There must be a negotiated, comprehensive, and lasting settlement to this conflict so that we can pave a way to peace and security. Make no mistake, support for the Armenian people transcends partisanship and politics. This is very bipartisan. And our America will be there as Armenia holds down an important front in the battle of democracy versus autocracy. We saw that when we were there. As the great Armenian poet, Farouk Greek Sabak wrote so beautifully about his home country, what miracle made you not be extinguished as others before had done? The flame never went off, but through long centuries kept on burning. Let us preserve, pledge to preserve the miracle of Armenia, whose flame of freedom has kept on burning, now, of course, in Armenia, but in America, with so many Armenian Americans being a resource to our country and a bridge to Armenia. Thank you all for what you did and are doing to make sure we keep Armenia safe. Thank you so much.